Welcome dear friends. This is an Excel intermediate video where we will see the use of built-in functions and the pivot table. Let us do a quick recap of what we covered in the first part. Introduction to Excel, opening and saving Excel file, basic navigation and interface, cells, rows, columns, sheets, etc. Entering and formatting data, merging cells, sorting and filtering, formulas and charts. Our topics will be to cover the most commonly used built-in functions, how to enter those formulas and demos to execute those formulas and also to understand what are the different types of categories of functions and formulas. And we will also see the use and a demo of the pivot table. Built-in functions in Excel are predefined, ready to use formulas designed to perform a wide range of tasks efficiently, from basic calculations like summing or averaging numbers to complex data analysis, logical operations and text manipulations. Before we dive into the built-in functions functionality, let us see how they are categorized. Excel functions are categorized based on their functionality, helping users solve a variety of tasks efficiently. They can be broadly classified into mathematical and statistical functions, logical functions, text functions, lookup and reference functions, date and time functions, financial functions. The first category, mathematical and statistical functions, are the backbone of problem solving and data analysis. They simplify complex calculations, drive accurate conclusions, and empower us to analyze, interpret, and solve real-world challenges efficiently. Now, before we start making use of the built-in functions, let us go through some basic formulas. So the first one is add. Now, if I want to add two numbers, say one plus one, so the basic way to do that would be to put an equal to sign for Excel. Whenever we begin any formula, we have to put the equal to sign first. So we put the equal to sign and we say one plus one, press enter, and you get your answer. Now, I want to get my answer in a dynamic fashion. So in this cell, I'm going to put is equal to, and I'm going to choose my cell. That is my cell B1. I will put the plus sign here, and then I say, choose my cell C1 and press enter. And here you see the sum has been calculated. Now, if I go and change the values here to any number, you will see that automatically the answer will be reflected in this cell. Similarly, we will do the subtraction. Now suppose I want to subtract these two numbers. So the basic way would be to say two minus one equal to one. But I want to do a dynamic calculation. So I will put is equal to, I will take my cell B2, put the minus sign here, and then I choose my cell C2 and press enter and I get number one here. Again, I can change my number dynamically and I can see my result change accordingly. Similarly, let us try multiplication. Now, suppose I want to multiply two into two. So in Excel, whenever we multiply or in any computer language, the sign of multiplication is the star. So here, is equal to 2 into 2 would be 4. Again, we will uh, do the same calculation by selecting our cells. So, is equal to cell B3 into cell C3 and enter. And you can see the multiplication has been calculated. Now, let us go and do division in the same manner. Over here, if it is 4 and this is 2 and the simple calculation would be to put the numbers directly and see the answer and here in this cell 
we will choose our cells. So we say B4 and this sign is the division sign in the computer language and then we choose our second cell and let us see the answer. So here we have our dynamic answers. Now we will see our first built-in function which is sum. I can use my built-in functions by putting the equal to sign and then I type my function. So here you can see in this drop down all these functions are built-in functions provided by Excel. So first I am trying my first function which is sum and you can see so many other built-in functions that begin with sum. Here you can also see a little tool tip which tells you what the function does. For example, here it says adds all the numbers in a range of cells. When I want to see the syntax of my formula, when I put the first bracket, open bracket, I see the syntax of my formula. So basically it is expecting me to enter the numbers. Now I can enter the range of numbers here. So I, I can select one cell and I can drag till whatever numbers I want. Now over here I have selected from uh, the first row and then I close my bracket and I simply get my total. Similarly, if I want to change my range again, I can simply go and change my range. So over here in this formula bar, you can see it the range is from B1 to E1. I select it again I, and I choose I, my new range. So now you will see that my uh, sum value has changed. Now let us see the use of the max and min functions. Now if I want to find which is the number which is of max value in this range. So I start with the is equal to sign and use my function max. I open my bracket and choose the range. And then I press, I close my bracket and press enter. And here you can see it has automatically calculated the maximum number in my range is 7 and here it reflects the same. Similarly, I can find the minimum number as well. I do the same thing. I choose the range and I close my bracket and I get my answer. The minimum in this range is number 1. Now let us see the function count. The count function basically gives you how many numbers exist in a particular range. So if I select a range and close this, it will give me the answer 16. So I have 16 numbers in this range. Now you can see here the count A function. So the purpose of count A function is the count function only counts the numbers in the cells. But sometimes there can be other elements as well. For example, I just want to have some word numbers over here. Like for example, I am giving some two examples. So I will type count A and I will put my range. And now you can see the answer is 18. Now suppose if I remove this count A, and even though I have selected this entire range, you can see it's from B1 to F4. The answer is 16. So if we want everything to be included other than numbers, we have to put the count A function. Now let us see what the count blank function does. Count blank basically counts the number of blanks in a range. For example, over here we put our function count blank and I select this range. So over here we have value in every cell except these two cells, the cell F3 and F4. So now let us see what answer it gives. It gives us the answer 2 because I have two cells which are blank. Now let us see how to use the built-in function of average. So here I type the function name average and I select the range from which I want to choose the average number. 
So let us see what the answer is. So I can see my answer is 2.8125. Now we will see the median. So for the median I type the formula name median and I choose my range enter and my median is number 2. Now let us see some practical usage of the average and median. Over here I have an income group. I have some five incomes. Over here you can see there are some income numbers. Now if I want to calculate the average, I will put my function name and I will select the range of which I want to calculate the average. Now over here you can see my answer that is 20,600. Now you will see that this number is quite high from the income that we can see here. Now it's because this particular number which has made this average high. So in such cases if we want to get an idea of what is the general income then I will use the median. So if I use the median formula and I select my range. Let me see what my answer is. So here you can see the answer is 7000. It is very different from the average. So what is the idea of median? So in median what it basically does is. So for median it arranges the number in ascending order. Now over here first let us arrange this in the ascending order. So I am using the sort uh, function. Now by default the sort happens column wise but I want to sort row wise. So I have this option here and I will select sort left to right. So I have to select this and then I select my row. So I, I am sorting the row number 12 and then if I select ok you can see now that it has arranged. So 5000, 6000, 7000, 10000 and 75000. So over here in median it takes the mid value which is 7000. So we get an idea that roughly the income of this group the median is 7000. Let us have a look at the round function. So by default the round function whenever we have any decimal numbers. So what it does is it will check the last number after the decimal points the last number if it is greater than 5 then the previous number becomes plus 1 if it is less than 5 then the previous number will stay as it is. So over here the answer should be for round of this number suppose if I round it then the answer should be 2.3 if I round it by one digit let me just try using the built in function. So I am choosing my number over here you can see it is giving you the format round number and number of digits. So mine is a uh, I have two decimal points so I am going to round it by one digit. So now let me see what is the answer it is 2.3 because the number 4 is less than 5 so the previous number will stay as it is. Now what is round up let us see what is round up. So in round up I'm going to select my same number and let me see the answer. Now here what has happened here even though the number 4 is less than 5 it has still increased my previous number by 1. So round up forces the function to make the previous number higher by 1. And similarly round down does the exact opposite. So round down ensures that even if the number is higher it will not increase the value. For example suppose we take this number 3.76. Now if you take a general round function what do you expect the answer to be? If you take a general round function the answer will be Three point eight, but if I take a round down, uh, 
answer is 3.7 so even though 6 is greater than 5 it is still not going to add 1 to my previous number so these are the different types of round functions that we have now let us go through the logical functions logical functions help us think clearly and make decisions they are useful for solving problems and understanding conditions in everyday situations so let us see some of the common logical functions the first one which is the most common one is the if function so over here suppose if we type uh, the if function we can see the definition of the if function which i have magnified over here so what it basically says that if logical test so whatever condition that you want to test you will give it as the first argument of your function and if this is true then whatever you give over here that will be your answer else whatever you give in this place in this argument that will be your answer so for example in this block i have written an if statement which says if d4 is equal to excel then print spreadsheet else print word so now in this cell the d4 cell i have written excel so my logical test has become true and that's why it is printing spreadsheet now suppose i simply copy this formula now here it is giving me the answer as word why is that because when i copied the formula so now i have jumped to the next row so it has automatically picked up over here this as d5 so now d5 is not having any value it's a null value that is why my logical test has failed so when uh, we fail or the condition becomes false so this argument will get printed so over here we have printed word that's why in this cell we get the answer as word now let us see one practical example suppose we have a table with marks now i want to put a condition saying that if marks are greater than 40 then we say pass else we say fail so what is my condition so i'm going to say if now the value in which cells i need to check so i need to check the values in row, num uh, row number 9 so first I will check for the column E so I'll say if say E9 is greater than 40 this is my test condition then I want to say pass and if it is not true then I want to say fail so let us see what it says it is saying pass now suppose i want to repeat this so over here it has taken e10 but i don't want e10 what i want here is i want the second column value that is i want the f9 value so instead of e10 i will replace it with f9 so now let me see what is the answer the answer is fail because the marks are 25 which is less than 40 so similarly if we do for c what will be the answer the answer will be pass so now let us have a look at the and function the logic of and function is that if there are two arguments in the function and if both are true only then your result will be true but if either of it is false or both are false then your result will always be false so for the and function to return true both your conditions should be met and the result will become true for example over here let us use our marks table so we are saying that if this cell value if e9 is greater than 40 and I'm putting my second argument. I'm saying for this cell value that if G9 
is greater than 80. Then let us see what it returns. So it is returning true. Now suppose we want to test it again. Let us test a condition where one argument is returning true and the other is returning false. So let us see. So if I say if E9 is greater than 50 and G9 is greater than 80. So now over here my first argument will return false because E9 is equal to 50 and the second argument will return true. So let us see what uh, overall answer we get. It is false. So similarly if we put the other combinations like these we will get the answer as false. Only when both the conditions are met it will give us answer as true. Now let us check the OR function. So the logic of OR is that if both the arguments are true or if any one of them is true then the result that is returned is true. Only when both the arguments return false your result will be false. So let us try one. So if I put a condition on my marks table that if this cell, okay, the value in this cell is less than 50 and the value in the second cell is less than 50, what should be the answer? It is returning true because this is returning false. However, the second value is less than 50. So it is returning true. Now, if you want to check the other condition, now suppose I'm simply copying this for ease. So I just want to replace this with this and I want to say if it is equal to 50 and I will keep the second condition as it is and I will just check. So it is returning true. Now, let us try to make both the conditions false. So if E10 is less than 50 and your, uh, sorry, not E10, E9. So if I say if E9 is less than 50 and F9 is greater than 50. So over here, both the conditions are false. So we should get the answer as false. Now let us see an example where the if and and logical conditions are used together. Suppose if there is a store which is offering discounts. So the condition is that if the price of the item that is purchased is greater than 50, and the buyer is a member of that store, then you give the discount. Otherwise, we do not give the discount. So in this uh, situation, we use the condition of AND because in AND, you need both the conditions to be met. Only then your function will return true. So let us see over here. So in this cell, you can see the formula that is written is if we give the and condition that if E20, so E20 is my cell of the price. So I say if the price is greater than 50, so in our case the price is 65. And I say that if the second cell, that is the status, is yes, then give discount. If this was false, then we say no discount. But in this case, both our conditions are met. That's why over here, the value which will be printed will be discount. Now, why it is no discount over here? Let us see. So over here, I have uh, changed the columns here. So now here, it's E21. So here, the value is 100. So the price is greater than 50, yes, which is true. However, the status is no. That means the customer who purchased that particular item is not a member. So if the person is not a member, 
we cannot give discount to that person. So it should return no discount. Now let us see how to use the if and or and combination. So over here we have an attendance warning sheet, a set of students and their attendance and marks. The condition is that if the student has uh, got less than 75 attendance and less than 50 marks, then we want to give them a warning. Else, we want to let them have a good standing. So over here, I've just uh, given this formula uh, so that you can see it properly. Now the same formula is written over here. So if F27 is less than 75, so this value is F27. So in this case, what is happening? This is returning false because the marks are greater than 75. And what about the second one? So the second condition is if G27 is less than 50, but this is also greater than 50. So what is basically happening that both the conditions have returned false. So over here, both have returned false. And that is why we will not print the first argument, but we will print the second argument. And in these three cases where I have got warning, so in all the cases of these students, what is happening? Either one of the condition is becoming true. Like for example, Tina has got 80 attendance. So that is, uh, that condition is becoming false. However, she got less than 50. So this condition is becoming true. And that is why she got a warning. So similarly for the other two, that over here, like in this case, both the conditions are returning true. So it will be a warning and over here, this condition is returning true. So she will also receive a warning. Now let us see the NOT function. The purpose of NOT function is simply to negate the results of your function. So over here, what I have given is, if I, I am saying that NOT G34 is equal to 100. So in this cell, g34 the value is 100 so basically this condition returns true but i want to flip it so when i flip it the result becomes false now in what kind of scenario can we use the not for example over here i have a status of invoices okay so there is different status one is paid not paid partially paid pending etc now the condition that i want to give here is that if this particular status is paid, then you say it is complete. But if it is anything else other than paid, then I want to say it is pending. Okay. So I don't want to put different AND conditions and OR conditions to check each and every status. I simply want to check one status and I want to say if this is true, then fine. Else give the other answer. So over here, if I say if G36 is paid, so this will return true because the first column over here, the first cell, this value is true. So this will return true, but since I said not, it will become false and it will go to the next value, which is complete. So it is giving answer as complete. But for anything else, so if not G37 is equal to paid, now here it is, it is the answer is not paid. So basically means this will return false. Now since this particular portion is returning false and I'm making a not for it, so it will return true and it will give me pending. Similarly over here, suppose if I just drag this formula, again it is pending because now the status is partially paid, which means it is not paid. So again, it will give me pending. Let us take a look at the function sum if. So in sum if basically what we are saying is that you have to give me a total based on a certain condition. So adds the cell specified by a given condition or criteria. So over here you can see the arguments which are enlarged. So my first is range. So I need to select the range. So what is range basically over here suppose this is a small table. So from this range I want to do my calculations. Now my second argument is criteria. So what is my criteria? My criteria is that I want the sum for 
the value which is in this particular cell. So this cell number has come here and then I want to say uh, then I want to give the range. So from which range it has to add from this range. But let us see how it calculates. So I have given that range but my answer is 12. So why is the answer 12? Because I said the criteria was the value in this cell which was fruits. So it has calculated only the numbers which were there under the columns which were fruits which is 7 plus 5, 12. Text functions. Text functions in Excel are powerful tools for working with text data. They help in organizing, modifying and analyzing text efficiently, making tasks like combining, splitting or formatting text quick and easy. Now let us see some of the most commonly used text functions. So the first one is called concatenate. So what it basically does, it combines the text which are given as argument. So over here, suppose if I start with my function. So my function is concatenate. Concatenates a list of range of strings. So over here, I will give the range. So suppose if I just want to concatenate these two. So if I press enter, I get Microsoft Excel. If I wanted to also include this, so what I need to do, I need to include this also in my range. So I am adding office as well. So now let us see what is the answer. So it is Microsoft Excel office. So say I just want to keep it as Microsoft Excel for now. Now the len function. So len function basically calculates the length of your text. So it is very simple. Over here you just need to give this uh, text for which you want to calculate the length. So suppose I want to calculate the length of this word Microsoft and it has given me the answer as 9. Now what is left? Left basically means that from a particular text if I want to extract the text value from the left side of the text then I can use this left function. For example, I say left. So first I specify the text and then over here this is number of characters. So how many text you want to be extracted from the left? So suppose if I choose this text and I am saying that I want the first five uh, text from there, first five values. So I will enter 5. So what, what answer I will get? I will get the answer as micro. Now right also works in the similar fashion but instead of left it will give you values from the right. So suppose I want to extract the word soft from it. So I say right. I select my text and then I say I want the last four characters. So it has given me the word soft over here. So now let us see the middle function. So the middle function, the name of the function is mid and here it uh, will return the characters from the middle of a string. So here we need to give the text and other than that we need to give the starting position from where you want to start extracting the text and how many characters. So say I choose this text and I want to start from position number 3. And from position number 3, I want to extract 2 characters. So it has given me this CR. So it is position number 3 and from there I want to extract 2 characters. So if I want to change, I can change it to say 5 characters. Now upper. This is a very commonly used uh, function. So upper basically just changes the font from lower case to upper case. So over here we say upper and give your text and it has changed the case from lower case to upper case. Similarly the function lower will change your case your upper case to lower case. Now 
this function search is a very essential function let us see how that works so basically search function is utilized to return number of character at which a specific character or a string is first found so let us see suppose i want to search in the word microsoft i want to search where does the word soft start from so first i will have to give the text in which i want to find so the arguments you can see here are find text within text and the starting number so i want to find what text i want to find the word soft in my text microsoft and where do i want the search to begin with i want it to start from the first position so it has given me the answer as 6 that the word soft is starting from the sixth position which is correct first to 1 2 3 4 5 and 6th so this is how the search function works now let us see how the replace function works so in replace what we are doing is we want to replace a group of characters from our word and replace it with some other word for example in my word microsoft i want to replace the word the part of this word that is soft with the word chip so what it says i have to put the old text first so i am going to put the old text and then i have to give the start number so where i want to start the replace from so the word soft it starts from the position number 6 so and how many characters i want to replace i want to replace four characters and what is the text that i want to replace it with i want to replace it with the word chip so now let us see how it does a replace so here you see that my word microsoft has been replaced by the word microchip now let us see how we can use the search and replace function in combination so for example if i want to do the same exercise of replacing the word soft by the word chip in microsoft how can i do it so first in the word in the replace function i will first put the word that i want to replace so here instead of selecting the cell i'm directly typing the word i can do that as well so here i'm saying microsoft and the first the second argument is start number so how do i find the position so instead of directly putting the number 6 i will use the search function over here so what i wrote in the search function above i will i will do the same thing so i am saying so the first argument here is find text so what am i looking for i am looking for the word soft and where am i looking for the word soft i am looking for the word soft in the word microsoft and i want to start searching from the first position so this is my search function which is complete and now i will continue with my replace function so what is required in my replace function the third argument so i have to choose how many characters i want to replace and with what word so i want to replace replace it with the word chip so here my formula is complete and i got the answer microchip so this way we can combine various functions together instead of writing separate functions we can combine various functions together in one function and get the desired result now suppose in this particular word i also wanted that this word should be in upper case so what i will do i will start the function upper and enclose this entire function inside the brackets so whatever result this whole function is returning to me it will convert it into upper case look up and reference functions these functions are essential for finding and retrieving specific data within your worksheets they simplify data organization and enable efficient searching and referencing making it easy to work with large data sets 
So now let us see the function VLOOKUP. So V over here stands for vertical. That means I am trying to look up for some value in a vertical fashion. So suppose I have this table here which is basically giving me the price and quantity of roots. Now what I want to do is I want to find the price of a particular fruit. Suppose I want to find the price of mango. Now how will I do it? So over here I start typing my function. Now here for your uh, clarity I have expanded the function because this is a big function and a little complicated one. So the first argument that we need to put what is that? We need to put which lookup value. So what are you trying to search in this table? So I am saying that I want to search this value. I want to search the value for mango. So I have selected this cell. Then I have to select the table array. So over here I have to select from which uh, particular uh, range that I want to find this value. So over here I will select the range that is this range. Okay, That means I want to select the price for the given fruits and it has to search my particular fruit to get the value. Then I have to select the column index number. So column index number means I have to specify that which particular column I am going to search that number from. Remember this is a vertical search so we have to give the column number. So my column number is number 2 in my table. And then this last uh, argument which says true if it is an approximate match, false if it is an exact match. But I want to have an exact match so I will say false and you can see that it has found the value for my fruit. So I had given that I want to find the value for the uh, value in this cell or that is for the mango and the price is 40. Now similarly you can try for the quantity. Suppose I want to find quantity for lemons. So what will be the formula? So we say lookup, the first argument is the lookup value. So over here now I am choosing lookup value to be lemons. Then I choose my range. So where do I need to search now? I need to search in the quantity column. So I can select the whole range. Okay, I, let me select the whole range and let us see how it searches it. And now I will say from which columns I am saying from the column number 3 and then I say I want exact match so I am saying false and here you can see that it has retrieved the value for the quantity for lemons. So now let us look at the function H lookup. So the H stands for horizontal. So in the V, V lookup we were giving the column index number. So we were looking vertically and in the H lookup we will give the row index number. So we will look for the value horizontally that is row wise. So suppose I want to find the quantity at a particular position. So my focus is on the quantity. So I will start with my H lookup function and I will enter the arguments. So the first one is the lookup value. So what, what are we looking for? So I am looking for the quantity and I will have to select my table array. So this is my table array and I am giving the row index number. Where do I want to get this quantity from? From which row? So I am saying I want this from the row number 4 and, and I am giving my range lookup as false. So here you see it has given me the value 800. So this was the row number 4 and I got the value of quantity at row number 4. Now let us look at the match function. So in match function what it does is we give it a particular value and that value position is returned by the match function. Suppose I want to find 
the salesperson named Bob and I want to find which position he is in this particular range. So over here I will start writing my function. The first argument is the lookup value. So what do I want to look for? I want to look for the employee named Bob and I want to look in which array. So what is the lookup array? This is the array in which I want to look for that value. So and then I put I, I need an exact match or greater or whatever. So I want an exact match. So I'm going to put the value as 0. So you see that it has returned the value 2 because in this range the value the position of the employee Bob was at number 2. Now let us have a look at this important function called index. So what is the purpose of index? The index function returns a value or reference of the cell at the intersection of a particular row and column in a given range. Now suppose this is the range of values from which I want to find a value which is an intersection of a column and a row. Okay. Suppose I want to find the um, how much sales was done by the salesperson Bob. So Bob is at this level in this row and how much sales he did in the month of February is what I want to find out. So this is the intersection point. Now how will uh, this function calculate that? So let us put the index function and its arguments. So the arguments what are they? The first one is the array. So array is what basically the selection of the range of values. So this is my array from which I am going to get my answer. The second is the row number. So I am going to look at this row. Why? Because the employee Bob is belonging to this particular row which is the row number 2. And which column I am interested in? Interested in? I am interested in again the second column which is February. So I am going to put 2 again. And what it has returned to me? It has returned to me 5200 which is the value that I was looking for. Now if this table was a very big table and say Bob was at the row 11,000 or 15,000 it is impossible for me to find out this intersection value. Like in this um, formula we put the row and the column value as 2 and 2 but if it is such a big data set we cannot find it. So we have to make use of some other function that will help me to dynamically get that position. So here we are going to make use of the match function. So let us see how the combination of both the function works. So I will start with my index function and first I will specify the array that this is the array from which I want to get my final value. Then I will make use of the match function. So in the match function, the first argument is the lookup value. So I have to mention what am I looking for? I'm looking for the name of the employee, which is Bob. And I have to specify where I'm looking for this value. So I'm looking for this value in this particular column. Then I have to mention I, I want exact match or not. So I am saying that I want a exact match. Now, this is what I did to retrieve my row value. Now how I can retrieve my column value. So I will use again match function and now I want to retrieve the month value. So I'm going to put the name of the month for which I want my answer and what is the array of the month. So this is uh, the lookup array for the month and again I want an exact match so I'm going to put 0 and this is my complete formula. So again you see that it has given 5200 to me. Now suppose if I uh, I want to use the same index formula for some other employee then instead of Bob say I want to find about Charlie. So I can just replace the name Bob over here with Charlie and let us see what happens. So I got the answer 6300 because now what happened uh, automatically now it looked for Charlie and it picked up the 
row where Charlie is and it looked for the column where the column value is February and it fetched us this value. Date and time functions in Excel help you manage, calculate and analyze date and time values effortlessly. They are essential for tasks like tracking deadlines, calculating durations and organizing schedules. Now let us find these values listed here by using the most commonly used date and time functions. So if I want to find the current date, the function is today. So if I simply type the name of the function with the open and closing brackets, I will get the today's date. Also, if I want the current time, the name of the function is now. And it is giving me the time with the current date. If I want to extract specific parts of my date, then I can make use of the day, month and year functions. So if I want to extract only the day, I type day and I give the serial number. Your serial number basically means which date you want. So it is giving me the day from this particular date, which is the 26th. Now, if I want the month, again, I'm choosing this date. So it should only give me the month. So the month is 11, that is November. And now I want the year. So again, it should only give me the year part from the date. So it is giving me 2024, which is the year part. Now, similarly, we can extract the hour, minute and seconds from the time. So let us uh, do that. So for the hour, it is hour function. And I will put my date over uh, date and time over here. So it is giving me the hour that is for, uh, 17. Then let us see for the minutes. So for the minutes, the function is minute. Again, I put my time over here and I get only the time part. And now we will do the same for the seconds. So over here, I'm selecting this second and then I select my time and I press enter. So currently the second when I pressed enter it was 23 seconds. Now let us just refresh our minds about changing the format of the date and time. So over here suppose I want to change the format over here because I also want to see the second. So what do I do? I right click I go to format cells and I can choose whichever format I want. So the current one which is selected is this format, but I want to see only the time and I want to see suppose in this format. So I select this and say OK. And now you can see only the time along with the seconds value. Now let us see the date diff formula. So the purpose of date diff formula is to find the difference between two dates. So for example, I want to find the difference between this date and this date. And now we should give the third argument as the unit in which you want the difference. So over here, Y stands for difference in complete years. So this is in 2024, this is in 2023. So according to these two dates, what is the difference in the number of years? Or if you want the number of days, how much is the difference in the number of days or months? So like this, you can give any unit from here. So let us first give D that I want the difference in the number of days. So here you go. It shows 368 days. That is the difference. Now, if I want to do the same thing, but I want to do it not in days, but I want to do it in say years. Okay. And I want it again for those columns. I'm just replacing it back. So now see, it, uh, the answer is 1. So basically the difference between these two years is total 1 year. So like this, you can give whatever unit you want. And it will give you the difference between the two dates. The last type of functions that we will see is the financial functions. Financial functions in Excel are powerful tools 
for analyzing and managing financial data. They assist in calculations like loan payments, interest rates, investment returns, and budgeting, making complex financial tasks simple and efficient. Now let us have a look at one of the financial formulas. So these financial formulas are advanced level of formulas. Over here, we have given you one example of the PMT function. The PMT function calculates loan payments based on constant payments and a fixed interest rate. So for your ease, for your understanding, I have created one simple table over here for the loan parameters. So over here, this is how my formula will look like. So is equal to PMT and then you have to enter your arguments. So what are these arguments? Here, uh, the first argument is the interest. So interest is in my this column, which is 6%. So here I'm dividing by 12 because I'm calculating the total amount in months. So I need to divide it by 12. Then I'm giving the second value, which is the J8 value, which is the loan term. So for how long you're going to take this loan. And this is my loan amount. So this is my uh, all the arguments that I have given these are required for calculating your PMT amount. So let us have a look over here. So over here you can see that all these arguments are there in the formula and it has calculated everything by taking all these things into account and the answer has been given over here. Now let us see what are pivot tables. A pivot table is a dynamic Excel tool that summarizes, organizes and analyzes large data sets, enabling quick insights and flexible data exploration. So here I have a table that shows me how much sales was achieved for particular products in particular regions and on which dates. Now if this sheet was filled with information like this. It is impossible to find the data with ease. Even if we add filters, it is not very easy to find the data. So let us see how pivot tables help in this matter. So first we need to select the region for which we want to create that table. Then we go to the insert menu and select pivot table. And here I want to see the table in a new worksheet. So I click OK. Now this is where I do the uh, choice of how I want to see my data. So suppose I want to see product and region wise sales information. Now this product I want to see column wise and I want to see the region row wise. So here you can see in under columns product and under the rows you can see region and this has already assembled the table for you and I want to see the sales. So in the values, what I want to see is the sum of sales. So here you can see all the data. If you want, you can add an additional filter. So I'm using the date column as an additional filter. Suppose I want to see the sales only for a particular date, then I can choose this way. Or we can try the other options as well. Now even amongst the rows and the columns, I can Suppose I want to just see the information about the laptops. I will only choose laptop. So this way, this pivot table gives you a very comprehensive view of the data and you can filter and see the data that you want. Now suppose I want to change the entire design of this table. I want to put the uh, columns. I want to put the product as rows. So here you can see that I have a hierarchy created. So first the row that I have selected is region and under that there is product. So there is a hierarchy created. So first I can see region and under that there are the products. So this way you can create different types of designs that you want. I can switch the data field from different areas and I will get my pivot table according to that. So the advantage is that I don't have to create multiple tables to view the data. I can have a single sheet where I can manipulate the data as I want. Also over here you can see that we are 
uh, seeing the sum of values but if you want to change this you can use this little drop down option and instead of sum you can see other values like average max min whatever you want